Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Campbell. I'm your host. And today on the Orange Take, we are going over the college application process. And I have with me... Um, I'm Rachel. Uh, I graduated from Hendricks in 2021. And now I'm an admissions counselor for the Pulaski and Sling County areas in Central Arkansas. And um, we'll just go together. We're going to talk about our personal experiences mm -hmm. applying for Hendricks, but we're also going to talk about more general steps and what to do and how to relax a little bit about it. We'll go through the steps and make it a little easier. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let's go All ahead right. and get started. Okay. Okay, welcome. I <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Okay, so a little bit about Hendrix. Um, if you're on this, you may know, but um, I'll just give some background information. Um, we're located in Conway, Arkansas, which is in central Arkansas, about 35 minutes from the capital, which is Little Rock. Um, we're a four-year liberal arts college, and liberal arts just means that it's an emphasis on interdisciplinarity when you're learning and um, being really well-rounded students who are really good at engaging with critical thinking. Mm -hmm. um, we have 21 NCAA Division III sports, um, over 30 majors, over 30 minors, and many pre-professional programs. Um, we are a career oriented and a graduation or graduate school oriented school to prepare you for the next step. Uh, so we always say we want you here for four years, but then we want you ready to go. But for now, we'll focus on the getting here. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So um, how to apply. So you have two options. You have the common app, which you may have heard if you have visited other schools or if you have like older siblings who have done this. Um, and then you have the Hendrix application. Um, so an overview is that the common application is an application that you can fill out once and send to multiple different schools. Um, this means that you don't have to do the basic background information a bunch of times. You don't have to do your personal info a bunch of times. Um, and it kind of streamlines the whole process. Um, most schools accept them. Um, some don't. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, but we do. Um, and then when you fill it out, just one tip is to make sure that uh, the essay that you wrote is for the school that you're applying to or that your essay doesn't mention any school because when you send that common app out to a bunch of different schools but it's addressed to Baylor or it's addressed to Duke then all of your schools will read that so you just want to make sure that there's no extra um, schools in that essay. Yeah. Now if you do the Hendrix application that's our school specific application um, it's the same process it's the same um, essay prompts more or less um, and one of those prompts is an open-ended question. Um, some people ask me if I prefer one over the other, but at least for me and for most counselors, we don't really care. We're happy to get either one. Do you remember which one you filled out? I believe I filled out the common application. Um, I think from what I remember, because we're test optional, um, I thought that that was cool. And the you can correct me if I'm wrong, the essay that we have to write for here, is it individualized to Hendrix or is it more of a broad, like you can send in any college essay? Because I know some schools will have a prompt of being like, something super random. Like I applied for one that was like, what is your favorite food and why is it influential to your life? I don't remember Hendricks having a school specific. No, essay. not we. So we have seven prompts. I should have known that for mm -hmm. sure, but we have seven prompts. I'm pretty sure. And six of them are going to be like those specific questions. Yeah. Not that specific. It'll be like, what's an obstacle or who's somebody yes. that influenced you. Um, and then there's the seventh one, which is could be anything. It could yeah. be a topic um, that you like. It could be a school essay that you wrote that you're proud of. Mm -hmm. um, it can be really anything that you want to put in there. And yeah. we really welcome uh, creativity or mm -hmm. um, just something that was impactful to you or the food question. That's a really cool one. Yeah. So I think that'd be fun. To, I, I'd enjoy reading that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I remember going through like the college application process and writing my, um, mainly my common app. Um, what is it called? Like letter for the college or um, essay for the college. And I really enjoyed having like the openness to write about something for here because I do remember now that there was, they were very broad topics and a lot of your essays, if you're already starting to write them will probably fit into one of those like mm -hmm. niches. Um, but I think that going off of that little side tangent, really spend some time on your application for your, you know, your college applications because it should be really personal. It should be very um, unique to you and try to figure out something that maybe like a hundred million other people wouldn't have the same story of because I'm sure as yeah. a college like admissions counselor you read very similar things of like a sports injury or yeah. you know like different <laughs> things like that yeah. that are like try to find something different yeah so 
Yeah, I always say if it really was very impactful to you, we'll be able to tell that mm-hmm. while we're reading it. Um, so if it was a sports injury that really, really impacted your life, then yeah. absolutely write about it. But um, if you're not excited about what you're writing about, we we mm-hmm. can tell. And that it's not a make or break. There's never one thing that breaks your application, but um, it is an important, it's a way to be remembered and it's a way to engage. So awesome. Mm -hmm. And then I got a little note here that the prompts can be found on our website under the applications (laughs) information page, which is hendrix.edu slash apply exclamation mark. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) That is what is on (laughs) my tablet though. Yeah. Um, So you can visit, like she said, hendrix.edu slash apply Um, to apply for either of these. There'll be a link to both options, whichever one you prefer. I did the Hendrix application because I'm a control freak and I wanted each application to be done individually. Mm -hmm. Um, it was definitely the harder way and you don't need to do that. Yeah. Um, but I understand if you do, I'm the same way. Um, and then you can visit, uh, yeah, to see those links. Um, and the application opened August 1st. Um, some people thought that was a deadline. It's not, it's just that now it's open. So, mm-hmm. okay. So when you apply, um, we, there's a few things that are mandatory and then some things that are not, but they help, right? Okay. So we need your application, obviously either one. Um, And then we need your transcripts. Um, This means, you know, whatever your high school counselor, your report of your grades, sometimes I include eighth grade, but your high school career, all of your grades wrapped up. Um, At first, we'll get an unofficial transcript, basically, because obviously you're not done with your senior year, so you don't really know your grades yet, but that's okay. You just submit it anyway, and we can get a pretty good idea. Um, And you just ask your counselor for that. If you're having trouble getting that from your counselor or if there's some communication block, you can always reach out to me and I can, or to your counselor, not just me, but to your counselor and they can get that transcript for you. Um, Now, some of the optional things, Um, ACT or SAT test scores. Um, We are a test optional school, which means that um, if you're not the best test taker, um, if you're not really very proud of your score or it's just not where you want it to be, you don't have to submit a score. Um, if you're from the state of Arkansas, you'll need to submit a score for funding purposes, but we won't consider it as a part of your application if you don't want us to. If you are really proud of your score and you do want it to be a part of your application, just that's okay, we will, we will accept it, but it is an optional portion. Um, another optional one are letters of recommendation, but they do help. Um, if you have a teacher that was really influential to you or a coach or um, an employer or coworker, um, and they want to write you something, go ahead and let them and submit it because they may reveal a lot more about you than your application would. And that's really, um, that can be really helpful as a supplemental thing. And then finally, your resume. Um, again, if you maybe forgot to put something in your application or you just want to present your information in a different way alongside your application, um, a resume can really be helpful with that. Yeah, especially if you guys are happen to be involved in like community outreach programs or maybe teen boards or you've held a job for a little bit, I would totally recommend including that resume because I mean, I had worked a job, I was on a lot of teen boards and like volunteer hours. I would think that the college would love to know about those things because like Rachel mentioned earlier, we are liberal arts. Um, we're providing you a liberal arts education. That means we want you to be like the most multifaceted person that you can be once you come out of here. And so like, it looks really good when you come in as a multifaceted person already of like, yeah. you don't just play a sport and do school and that's it. Like we want to see you trying a bunch of different things. Cause when, you know, hopefully when you get here, you're going to realize like that is a very Hendrixy thing to do and to be is to try all new things, to be involved in a ton of things. Because I think, especially when you're in high school, it's very easy to fall into one group and think like, Oh, this is me. I play football. This is me. Or, Oh, I'm smart. This is me. I'm smart. Right. Whereas when you come to Hendrix, you can totally do and be those things, but we also want to open you up to being like, okay, well, I do play football, but maybe I also, you know, want to try painting or maybe I want to try ultimate Frisbee or, you know, something like that. And so I think that that's definitely a great opportunity to kind of start opening yourselves up for, you know, uncomfortable situations, new opportunities. Mm -hmm. And with letters of recommendation in college, and Rachel can attest to this, getting to know your professors is not like optional. It's a must. Like you've mm-hmm. got to talk to your professors. So it's a good practice to get into when you're in high school to talk to your teachers because, you know, maybe you don't have the need to go and talk to your teachers for like, you know, educational purposes, but it's a good practice to get into. So you're not quite as uncomfortable when you get to college and all the upperclassmen are going and seeing their off- like their professors during office hours. And you're like, why would I do that? Yeah. <laughs> Cause again, you're going to need letters of rec for some things, but, um, definitely a great practice to get into. Cause you will have to be comfortable with that when you get to college. So, 
Yeah, absolutely. And um, like when I was in high school, I didn't do a whole lot of extracurricular activities. It was kind of a homebody. Um, I like, I didn't play sports. I wasn't good at any of them. I didn't, wasn't in that many clubs, but I did get, I did have a job and I worked as soon as I got home uh, or like as soon as school ended, I went to work and then I would work until like 10. So that counts, that shows something about you. So don't mm-hmm. think like, oh, I don't, I don't really do that many activities. Mm-hmm. If you work or if you just do something in your free time, mm-hmm. a hobby, put that on the application. Yeah. We want to see it. Absolutely. School clubs too. School yeah. clubs are great as yeah. well. Um, so what does your admission counselor want to see? Um, like we were saying with the essay, we just want to get to know you. We want to see some of your personality come through. Um, we want to see if you will fit in here, if this is a community that you could really sink into. Um, college is what you make of it, so you can fit into almost any community, but we want to make sure that everything matches and is the right fit. Um, and we want to see some of your personality to ensure that. And then we can know how to talk to you better too. We can know how to communicate mm-hmm. with you and what to expect when you get on campus. So Absolutely. Um, there's never such, there's no such thing as like irrelevant information. Um, I had an application where a guy put that he was the only person who fed his cats in his house. Um, and he put that as nine hours a week. And that was like his employment. And so you would think like you wouldn't put that. Go ahead and put it. It was funny. It, it worked. And I know him a little bit better now. So um, I always recommend doing something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think especially like maybe you're interested in Hendrix, but you're like, I want to ask some more questions. We have like virtual office hours for like the admissions counselors for your like designated admissions counselors, but also as an intern, as a student worker here, maybe you want to talk to a student first and you feel a little bit more comfortable having like a conversation with a peer rather than an adult. Um, Myself and multiple other student workers here have office hours. So if you guys wanted to ask any questions about the application process, Hendrix, the college experience, anything like that, there's multiple of us that have our little pictures up there on our website when you go to hendrix.edu slash visit. Um, and we can just do a little virtual chit chat if that's mm-hmm. something you're interested in. But we, you can also do that with the admissions counselors if that's yeah more up your alley. So. Yeah, which is perfect for you know the, the connecting because you want to connect to your admissions counselor. So you figure out who that is um, based on your area. You can reach out to anybody and we'll help you get to the right place. Um, but also connect to the students and um, professors and coaches because they're here for mm-hmm. the all we're all here for the same thing and we want people on campus um, and the students are going to be able to tell you a lot of what's going on with the culture of campus yeah. and events and stuff that maybe staff don't know as well and um, we try to stay connected but there's only, only goes so far yeah. so um, but your mission counselor wants to hear from you we want to talk to you we love to chat on the phone with you we love to get on a zoom call with you and share emails and texts um, we want to know what's going on. We want to make sure that you're okay, that you're not stressed because we are here to make this process as easy as possible. So if you're stressed, if you're freaking out, then we're not doing our job. So yeah. you can always reach out and make sure that we're there to do our jobs. <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of the student athlete perspective, I play tennis here. And I remember when I was going through the recruiting process, I know it's different for every sport. Sometimes, you know, coaches are going to your games, going to your meets, going to your matches. Um, and because I came from out of state, I'm from Oklahoma coaches from out of state were not coming to Oklahoma to watch me play. And so I was doing my active recruiting, email the coaches, email them your recruiting tapes. If you're interested in playing sports here. Um, but also like maybe that conversation is going really well. They will put you in contact with your admissions counselors and kind of do some of that work for you. Um, but also like they can also put you into contact with students on the team. So maybe, you know, you play basketball and you're like, okay, I'm going to reach out to the basketball coach. He'll put you in contact with some of the guys on the basketball team. And also I believe we're doing overnights now. Again, are we not? Just kidding. We're not doing overnights, <laughs> but you will be able to meet with like students you can still on the meet team. People, yeah. yeah, I was about to say, like, I do it all the time. Um, I do walks here, but also like if there's, you know, basketball boys or lacrosse girls that are coming, oftentimes those coaches will put some of the current like members of the team with that student to talk to them specifically about what is the culture like on that team? What is the schedule like? What is the, you know, power or the time, um, you know, restrictions and different things, like how much time they're practicing, all that good stuff. And I want to bring up a question really quick. Um, Is there a maximum number of pages that's appropriate for the resume? And with how many days of our initial application should recommendation letters and scores be sent to be considered altogether? So two questions. (laughs) So for the resume I wouldn't say there's a maximum number of pages um I think as a life goal your resume should be about two pages um but uh, or one or two 
two maximum. But yeah. um, if it's more, if you have a lot that you want to put in there, I'll read it. And I know my colleagues would. So I think it's, you, there's not really a maximum. Um, and then as far as like days go, I don't think I could give like a specific day. Mm -hmm. um, your counselor basically will get a notification email or whatever that you have submitted new material, be it a recommendation letter or uh, your scores or whatever. And then they will look at it and put it with your application. Um, my recommendation is to get all of your material in together as quickly as possible, um, just for ease. And so that we can see that information all together right away and consider it together. Um, because that, that can, that can help. So I recommend just mm -hmm. basically ASAP. Um, but your counselor will know if you've submitted supplemental information. I had a student last season who kept sending me more additional scores if they got better scores and more transcripts and more recommendations and stuff. And I, and I considered all of this. Yeah. And just a little advice from somebody who's been there, done that and still doing it with recommendation letters, make sure to give your teachers or coaches or whoever you're asking for two weeks. Don't be like, oh, I need this applic or I need this recommendation letter tomorrow because that's super unprofessional. And when you get to college, your professors will look at you and they'll be like, no, I'm not doing that. So just a good practice to, you know, respect their time. They'll respect yours. Ask for those in advance. Same thing with test scores. Um, I remember that was something that I, same thing with transcripts as well. The way that my high school did it was I had to send an email to the counselor and they had to get it and like, you know, email it to me or print it out and give it to mm -hmm. me. Um, make sure that you're like planning accordingly because with test scores, you don't just get to go and screenshot your ACT score and send it in. You have to get it officially like transmitted. Sometimes sending test scores costs money as well. Um, not always, but it can occasionally. And so just make sure like you're aware of all of these processes before and you're not like taken aback when you're like, oh no, I have, you know, to wait three days to get this like letter shipped to me or something. Yeah. So yeah. And then we have another question of how and where do you submit the letters of recommendation? Um, this person didn't see a spot in the com comment app. Uh, prompts? Um, I would say usually there should be a space for supplemental material on your application, but if there's not, just go ahead and email it to your app um, to adm at hendrix.edu um, and we'll get it sorted for you from there. Awesome. Okay. Sorry, Moving I had on. No, you're good. <laughs> oh, hold on. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Got it. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> Um, so our deadlines, so we're going to have early action one, November 15th. Um, you should get, you would get your decision in about a month. Um, early action two is February 1st. Again, same thing in about a month. And then regular decision is basically, um, February 2nd and forward. Um, national decision day is May 1st. Y'all may know. Um, we usually like to, if you're going to deposit with someone, we like to see it before or on May 1st. Um, you can deposit after, but that makes it just a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a pretty basic guideline for the deadlines. Early action one and two is not early decision. That's what um, is binding if you accept. This is just early action. It's just an early submission. Mm -hmm. And then does the deadline mean they have to submit on that deadline or by that deadline? By that deadline? Um, by yeah mm -hmm. you can submit you really can submit anytime um i wouldn't get too preoccupied with the deadlines except that um there's specific scholarships that we consider for um in the fall winter yeah. time so if you apply after that those are going to be closed basically um so i recommend doing it in the fall but um yeah. yeah you don't you don't have to do it on any date or anything like that yeah, just general good advice for any college application process, scholarship applications, money will run out quick, um, specifically with like local scholarships and the scholarships that the school is providing. Mm -hmm. um, at a certain point, they're going to be run dry or sometimes they just set deadlines and they're like, sorry, too bad. And so yeah. just general run of the mill advice, get your college applications, work really hard this first semester and just kind of grind them out. Same thing with scholarships, because it might stink and it's going to be a lot of work, but I tell everybody this whenever I talk to people on walks of just like how rewarding it is to come to college and know that you put so much work into something and just be proud of that of like I'm going to this phenomenal school Hendrix is such a nice wonderful school where I'm getting a great education but I had to put in work to come here mm -hmm. and so I think it made it even more rewarding the fact of like I really had to put in effort to to get here to be able to like be where I am right now so yeah, yeah absolutely it's worth it it's worth the um, 
worth doing it in the fall it'll pay off in the end and Mm -hmm. that's kind of that's kind of what college is it's like you're just like going hard for about 15 weeks and then you're Mm -hmm. done and then it's worth it at the end so to answer the question on here is earlier better kind of (laughs) and there's no like like she said earlier early action one and two those are not early decision there are some schools that are binding where if you apply for early decision there is a contract that you have basically opened with that there's really no downfall to applying now yeah yeah you have nothing to lose yeah. so <laughs> exactly okay um if you have any other any specific questions too um go ahead and feel free to like take down this information um we can go over uh anything that maybe you didn't want to ask in this or if you think of it later or anything like that um but we'll keep going don't worry we have more to, to yeah. chat about but if you need my information, um, that's chenault at hendricks.edu. Um, my people from Arkansas, from Central Arkansas might recognize that. Um, that's C-H-E-N-A-U-L-T at hendricks.edu. Um, again, the other email that you can reach out to is adm at hendricks.edu. Um, that's just a good general one, so. Awesome. Okay, oh. so some of our upcoming events. Um, also, I feel like if you have more questions about the application, keep keep asking yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Keep sending them in. And <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, we're, we're getting into more admission stuff, but we'll keep talking about mm-hmm. this, this whole process. Campbell and I can talk, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so some of our upcoming events. And this is part of the connecting with your counselor, connecting with the school. It's a good rule of thumb that whatever, whatever school you're applying to, connect with that institution, mm-hmm. especially if it's one of those big competitive schools. They wanna be able to recognize your name. They wanna know that you're engaged. They wanna know that you're interested. Um, and we want that too. We have a lot more fun with our students that we're, it doesn't matter for me, I don't really you know, get more excited about a 4.0 student than I do a 3.2 student. What I do get excited is to see that name that I see again and again of somebody who's trying to connect and who's really making an effort and searching for their colleges. Even if they tell me that their number one choice is somewhere else, I'm still excited to see them just because they're engaged. So that being said, some of our upcoming events, some of our virtual events, which may be a little bit easier for our out-of-state people, um, is uh, on September 24th, we have a student athlete day. Um, <laughs> We, we can talk about specifically what that culture looks like, um, what time management looks like, uh, so on and so forth. Um, I'm, not, I'm not an athlete. Campbell, maybe. Yeah, I can talk about that if you guys have questions about it. <laughs> um, October 10th is inter- internships and more. Um, November 7th is the FAFSA, which is delayed this year. So just to keep that in mind, it won't open until December 1st, which is a little bit of a, that's that stinks, but that's okay. Um, and then November 28th is going to be our senior check-in where we can talk about your senior year and um, how applications are looking. Yeah. Um, for upcoming events in person, we have daily visits Monday through Friday. Um, we have Hendrix Experience Days. You sign up for that. You can do a morning um, visit or an afternoon visit, um, whatever works best for you. It is excused. You do get a high yeah. school absence excuse letter, whatever. Um, and you'll meet your counselor. You'll um, go on a walk of campus with a student, get to ask questions. Campbell's one of our lovely walk guides. Um, They have a lot of information, more than I probably know. Um, And they can just talk to you about student life. Yeah. Um, We do have a weekend visit coming up, September 23rd. If you can't miss school, if you can't miss practice, if your parents can't get off work, whatever it is, um, you can come on a Saturday and come see the school on a weekend. Mm Um, then October 7th is our fall open house, which is one of my favorite events. Um, it's very cozy. It's very fun. You can see um, a lot of different aspects of campus. It'll be a much bigger group, bigger talks and panels and stuff like that. And then finally, October 27th is our STEM and pre-health day. Um, if you're into uh, pre-med, um, pre-any health science um, and any STEM, you can come um, do that event with us and hear from the faculty and students specifically. Yeah. I just wanted to point out because... I, I have something to come clean with because I know when my when I was going through this process of call back to, like college applications and different things, my parents were watching every single one of these orange takes. And if I had to guess, I would assume the majority of people in here are parents. <laughs> Tell your kids to watch these because I'm going to be honest, I didn't. I did it. And now I do them. And now I host them. And I think that looking back, this information would have been so vital to like my process of going through this because one I think we keep it pretty fun and like pretty interesting on here but I also think that I was really invested in like kind of tunnel vision to like applications applications like all this stuff but I wasn't really enjoying the process of like this is a massive change for me and I should really enjoy like 
this is stressful in a good way. This is change in a good way. And like mm-hmm. kind of open up my eyes to like, these are the opportunities at Hendrix. So I was looking up, oh, it has really good, you know, grad school, like um, acceptance and it has mm-hmm. all this. And like, obviously that is very important. Look at that stuff. That's super big, but also like, what are the clubs? What is the culture? What are the events and different things like that? And I think that Hendrix was one of the schools that I really, when I came on my, my visit here and I did my walk, it opened my eyes because my walk guide was like, Hendrix yeah like you get to do so much stuff like you're gonna have to learn how to manage your time but like it will be well worth it because you're not just gonna be a student you're not just gonna be an athlete you're gonna be so much more getting into so many different social groups and clubs and activities and like doing things that like I didn't think I'd ever be doing ultimate frisbee but look at me now like it's so fun and so I definitely think that I would have learned so much watching these videos and like kind of diving more into the website and doing all that stuff so for the parents tell your kids be like they told you to watch this like they shouted you out so, <laughs> yeah um and then we had a couple questions on here that I would like to get to really quick um could you repeat the FAFSA deadline yes um I am getting a note from my producer that um the FAFSA doesn't really have like a deadline there's not really a specific date that this is all happening um so basically whenever you, whenever the FAFSA opens, whenever that may be, sometime in the winter, um, you fill that out when you do your application. There's not really a FAFSA deadline. Um, By the point, I would say March, um, probably this mid spring would be the best, but um, it's kind of hard to say because we we do, when you file your application, we don't have that FAFSA yet, we do push you a little bit. So Mm -hmm. as soon as you file your application without a FAFSA, we'll start sending you communication, be like, hey, we need that to help you know, process your application. Um, so there's not a real deadline. I would say that, I, here, I'll actually go back to the original um, deadline page. Yeah, basically. So that y'all can see the dates yourself. Our note from our producer here is just saying, it's an application that you're gonna wanna look at sooner rather than later. And we are currently looking at the FAFSA that's opening in December. Um, so, yes. I'll leave these up for y'all so you can kind of get a basic outline mm-hmm. of what we're talking about. Um, it can be a little bit easy when this is what you do every day and it's your like constant jargon, yeah. but it, I understand that this is new. So um, don't worry too much about deadlines because you will hear from not just us, but other schools. You will mm-hmm. know when deadlines are coming up because we don't want y'all to slip through the cracks. We wanna make sure yeah. that everybody's caught up and everybody's confident about where they are. Um, so we will make sure to, to keep an eye on everybody mm-hmm. too. Check your emails too, because I know I didn't check my emails a lot when I was in high school. Check your emails because you got important stuff. You could have deadlines, you could have scholarship deadlines. Like it's definitely time to start that. So. Yeah. Maybe yeah. make um, one of my advice for the application process. Professional. <laughs> yeah, and professional in general is make a work, school, whatever specific email. Mm-hmm. If you need an email to attach to a bunch of different applications, including some other schools have like four different applications. We have just the one, um, which is also your scholarship application, but that's not the same everywhere. So I would recommend setting up a Gmail account or whatever um, just for this. And then you can have all your information in one place. You won't get ads. You won't get school emails. You'll just get college information. And that can really help you organize Mm -hmm. that. And then with that account, have like an Excel sheet or Google sheet of the important deadlines coming up. Um, scholarship offers, the school's name, um, whether you visit it or not, who your admissions Mm -hmm. counselor is, keep all that information laid out and then you can refer to it really easily and you won't get all these dates and all this information like mixed up in your head. So that's, that's Mm -hmm. my recommendation. Now I'm a pretty organized person Mm -hmm. most of the time, not, you know, but um, in high school, I definitely learned this very quickly to, Mm -hmm. to do these things. So that's, that's my advice for that. I was going to say the same thing, making a professional email name, not like potty monkey 27 like make it your name make it professional because it's gonna look silly um one of my best friends in high school hers was maddie pants 21 and she was sending her college applications and i was like maddie (laughs) shout out maddie but i was like you look silly um so definitely just make one make it your name something you know semi-professional at least um and also with that i'm also a pretty organized person and i think that until you visit that space until you go to that college a lot of those names can kind of blend in with each other and so having an excel sheet of like I know it might sound a little bit over the top but having I color-coded mine and it was like the college my Mm -hmm. admissions counselor the price of it the scholarships that are offered like all these different factors that made it like 
you know, what the experience would be like. Um, and also like, if you're a student athlete, do they have your sport? Have you talked to the coach? Are you able to be on that team? Different things like that. And so those are all super important, but I feel like once you, well, sorry about that. <laughs> once you visit the university, you, it's going to stand out in your brain. And I think specifically that was like the kicker for me was I'm sure if any of you guys are watching, you're interested in Hendrix, which is already great, but visit the campus, especially now over the school year. There were so many people. Um, I worked here over the summer doing walks and we had an incredible experience with every individual student that came here, but you know, over, sorry, we keep playing <laughs> with like... each other. Um, but over the summer, the culture is just not quite the same because people go home and we don't offer summer classes. So people go home and you know, it's gorgeous here in Conway, but when people get back and there's what five colleges in Conway yeah it's crazy there's a lot of colleges here and so it's a bustling college town you guys are in the perfect time to visit during fall and the leaves are gonna like (laughs) I I visited in November and my breath was literally taken away Hendrix was not really on my radar until I visited and then I was like there's nowhere else I want to go and so if you guys are interested you know make that trip and explore Conway as well. Downtown Conway is walkable, um, which is super great if you're not bringing a car. You don't need a car here to like function at Hendrix. At some big universities, it becomes really difficult to function without a car. You would not have to even think twice about it. There's a Walmart that's walkable. Downtown Conway is walkable. We have like wonderful accessibility to everything you really need here is on campus. Um, But that was just my whole point. Dittoing what you were saying of just stay organized make Mm -hmm. that email but also like you know until you visit us I feel like you know maybe we might just be another college but once you visit you you will come here I guarantee it because we just hook line and sinker you so good yeah yeah I'm from Little Rock Arkansas which is about 30 minutes away and I I was like adamant I did not like Conway I didn't want to look at Hendrix my mom wanted me to Mm -hmm. so of course I like didn't want to look at Hendrix even more because my mom wanted me to um and then I did and I like fell I now I visited in in the spring I was a late applicant I was late everything I'm I'm there but um I visited in like March or April it was raining and campus was really heavy and wet and just gorgeous and green and I loved it and that's that's what did me too as I visited and I just fell in love with the students and the faculty and just the feel of campus absolutely Um, I have a couple more questions and the first one I'm going to answer since I'm an art student if that's okay but uh, one of the questions we have here is this person's applying to Hendrix through the common app and they have an art portfolio that they would love to submit but while looking at the application they couldn't find a place for it is there someone I could email it to or something that I'm missing so now that I'm looking back on it I do think I applied through the Hendrix individual application Mm -hmm. because I remember that there was a spot to talk about like your interest your major interest blah 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 and like Maybe that wasn't on the actual application, but it was on something regarding yeah. like applying to Hendrix in that process. And so I'm a double major in studio art and film studies. So I'm very familiar with this process. Um, you don't need to submit an art application unless you're applying for the art scholarship. So we have a couple of scholarships that are like um, completely adjacent to like the regular scholarships that you get for applying. Um, so if you are an art student, also we have one here for the music scholarship it's the same boat. So I'm going to answer both of those at the same time. There's an art, music, and dance scholarship. And there's two other scholarships that I can talk about, the Methodist um, scholarship and the service scholar scholarship. I don't, are those all in the same bucket? I believe so. They're all extracurricular scholarships. Okay. So all of those that I just listed are extracurricular scholarships. And so for each individual one, obviously there's different, um, specifications for each one but for the art specific one I remember we had to make a and it might have changed but for me last year two years ago um we had to make a Flickr account with a specific number of our art pieces with our titles with the dimensions the mediums all that stuff so for my art people um my wonderful art teacher in high school he made us do a portfolio and have all those information so if any of you are in AP art or if you are doing some sort of portfolio um this year begin to do that now start that process because it can be really frustrating especially if you're you know traveling or not home or like you're scrounging around trying to find these art pieces the dimensions the mediums it's very stressful and you don't want to like fudge information on that stuff just be truthful to you know what you did and so if you're making art start looking up those things and you can check out the process for that but um 
for all of those scholarships, the answer to like when the application will be opened up is that you will want to mark your interest um, in the music or art or whatever um, co-curricular scholarship on your Hendrix application and your admi admissions counselor will be in touch with you when it's time to apply for it. Um, and the applications opens for admitted students. So it's very important to apply early. So you can only apply for those once you're admitted, which makes sense. But um, And they close in like the mid spring yeah. usually um now some you'll have to come like audition for um mm -hmm. in that that music and whatever realm um but we will help you set all of that up so um this is another reason why i recommend to apply in the fall just because mm -hmm. it's a little bit helpful with these things absolutely um and chasing up these opportunities yeah and then we have another question here can we you guys as seniors start going to college right now like going to college while finishing our last year of high school um, I guess that you could not here. <laughs> I guess yeah. that you could at other places like community colleges. Um, yeah, but, um, I, my recommendation, if it's, if it's what follows your life path and what you want to do with your next step, which is college. Um, then I recommend just finishing out high school and then starting on college as a separate entity, um, mm. treasure these last few months, um, or get through them, <laughs> whatever yeah. is like, whatever is your, your, whatever boat you're in right now. Um, and get that done, work as hard as you can in your high school stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the college stuff will, will open up to you. And then, um, you'll be so glad that you put in that extra work into your high school work, um, mm -hmm. before you started diving into the college stuff. Yeah. That's and if I'm you're sure. talking about concurrent specifically, like I know yeah, that's where different. I came from, like it was either like, if you were interested in that path, you would either do you know, there was like regular level classes, there was APs, and then there was concurrent. And I chose the AP route. Um, that was just what worked better for me. Um, because I don't know, I preferred it. But like, our local UCA equivalent, I guess, of like, where our where I was located offered concurrent classes. Um, and so if you're speaking about like, can you do if you're from Conway or Little Rock, can you do concurrent at Hendrix? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, but also, like Rachel said, enjoy your high school years because I know myself when I was a senior, I was like, oh my gosh, I just want to get through this. High school sucks. Like, I just want to be gone. I will say college is a million times better than high school. College is yeah, wonderful. Is. <laughs> but also that being said, you're only going to be in high school for one or two more years. Maybe you're a junior watching this. I don't know. But like, this is a period of your life that you're about to exit. And maybe it has been the worst four years of your life, or maybe it's been mediocre or the best, whatever, but like embrace all of these moments of like, I won't get to come back here. I don't get to come back and have a locker. I don't get to come back and, you know, go to gym. Oh, you can do gym class here, but it's not the same, no. but like, you know, definitely like I look back and like, not all the memories are wonderful, but they're definitely like some nostalgia of like, wow, like I, you know, I see something and I'm like, dang, I can't wait to be like, I can't wait to just look back on college and be like, I guess like I don't I'm not looking forward to being out of college but it's just weird looking back and being like I can't believe I wanted to get out of that so bad like life was so simple life was so easy and I'm sure and when I get out of college I'll be like oh college was so wonderful and like you know yeah. life was so easy <laughs> and like you know classes are hard here so right now I'm like mm, this is hard but is worth everything to like, you yeah. know, be with your friends and study. So if you want to connect with college and with the, that future, really just dig into your studies, dig into, like, if you're looking at Hendrix, dig, start planning Odyssey projects that you might be interested mm -hmm. in. Start looking up internships that you might want to do. Um, start looking into study abroad opportunities. Um, start like setting the wheels in motion mm -hmm. for college, but definitely just work really hard at your senior year and get yeah. those grades. Definitely be present in where you are, but looking and working towards the future is never a bad idea. Um, and with that being said, if you're already in those concurrent classes or APs, they're only going to help you prepare for college. And we're definitely asking for those transcripts to see and make sure what credit we can use from that, that can go towards your Hendrix graduation. Um, so like whatever you're taking now can come towards helping you here at Hendrix with your classes. Um, so yeah, if you're doing that that's great too like it'll definitely help you out in the future um separate question is there a separate process to apply for scholarships here um there's not so basically when you submit your application to um the college that is also your application for scholarship for that starting merit scholarship so you get a merit scholarship um or you you'll apply for one and then you'll um get uh on top of that 
uh, tuition advantage, which is where we match our tuition and fees to the tuition and fees of your state's flagship university. So I'm from Arkansas. So mine would be my state's flagship university is the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. Let's say they publish their tuition and fees are $9,000. They're not, let's just say. And then we publish ours at 13,000. I would get an additional $4,000 scholarship to match that. Um, so that's the process for that. Now for these extracurriculars, like we said, you have to be an admitted student. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a separate process, but again, we won't let you slip through the cracks. We'll help you uh, yeah. get to those and help you get what you need. So basic answer, they are the same process. You don't have to for fill the out main more than, merit scholarship. Right. You don't have yeah. to fill out more than one, um, for, to begin, you don't have to fill out more than one thing. So, yeah. Um, and you know, with that being said, again, once you're admitted, if you have questions about those other scholarships, just reach out, just ask, mm -hmm. um, Hey, I saw in the orange take, there were additional scholarship opportunities check those out as well. Um, and then this one is, are there any study abroad opportunities? And I feel like we could touch on this through Odyssey and Murphy, which I'm, yeah. I'm happy to talk about. If you want to talk about Odyssey, I can talk about Murphy. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a few. Um, so there is just like basic study abroad mm -hmm. where you um, join a different campus that we have a partnership with somewhere in the world. Um, we have a couple in China, a couple in Japan. Um, we have a handful in Europe. A really popular mm -hmm. one is Bonn, which I think is in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, I knew several people who went there and then we, there's one in like Toulouse. There's one in Madrid. Um, yeah. Costa Rica. Go. Yeah, one mm -hmm. in Roehampton, which is outside of London. Um, so yeah, there's a study abroad office. They'll reach out to you. They'll make sure you're you're aware of these opportunities, but also um, ask and follow up with people because I completely missed the application deadline to do study abroad. I kind of wanted to, and then I missed it, and I was like, that's a sign. Um, so then what I did instead was I did Odyssey. Mm. Um, now you would, if you were to study abroad and do a full semester or a full year away, you would get an Odyssey credit for that, which is our experiential learning credit. So that's, mm -hmm. you need three Odyssey credits to graduate. So you'd get one of those, um, by going out in the world and just doing something and engaging with the world, or you can engage with the world from campus, but something other than just in a lecture. Um, so for example, the Odyssey project that I did to kind of supplement that study abroad was um, I applied for credit and for funding from the Odyssey office to study literature and language, um, sorry, literature and landscape in, sing about Murphy, yeah. um, in Slovenia, Italy, and Switzerland for 12 days. And I got funded over $3,000 by the school to do that. Um, I just had to produce research at the end of it. Um, awesome. So I was able to travel and mm -hmm. able to go and do those things. I actually even snuck my best friend who went to a different school onto the trip <laughs> and brought her with me. Um, and uh, it was amazing. So those are some of the opportunities with Odyssey and with um, just general study abroad. If you have any more specific questions about that, feel free to drop them in the chat, but um, mm -hmm. that's a basic overview. And now yeah. you can talk about Murphy a little mm -hmm. bit. And we also have a study abroad office. So if you come to Hendrix and you're interested in that, we have an entire office with people who like can give you the nitty gritty details of exactly what you're wanting. Yep. Uh, so even if you're not even wanting to travel abroad till like junior year, like I know that I want to travel abroad, but I wanted to wait till I was more of an upperclassman just so I was like firmly grounded here. Um, go talk to them freshman year and be like, hey, I'm not wanting to do this now, but I just want to know the opportunities. Yeah. Always like communicate. It's just a great thing to do. Um, so for Murphy, just a quick overview of what Murphy is. Um, the Murphy Foundation for Literature and Language is a foundation that is Hendrix own Hendrix bread um, and as a second semester freshman so once you're already here you're on campus second semester of your freshman year you can apply to be a Murphy scholar and what that means is you get a four thousand dollar stipend to do a plethora of things it's really up to you it's just if you propose a project it has to do with literature and or language um, and if it's approved you can use that funding for it so that can be for study abroad that could be for learning a new language you want the money for Rosetta Stone that could be for going to conventions literally it is limitless um, but I'm going to use it in the terms of study abroad so um, also just by the way let's say you apply for the Murphy um, you apply to be a Murphy scholar and you don't get it you can still apply for funding, even if you're not a scholar. So don't be discouraged if, you know, you don't get it because there's still funding opportunities there, but you get it, whatever. That's awesome. Um, you can use that money towards study abroad. And then with that, you can get Murphy projects completed. So I'm a Murphy scholar. I'm starting on my Murphy process. And so being a Murphy scholar, you have additional requirements you have to meet and so you know it's definitely a, a handful of work but 
I mean, you get a stipend and you're allowed to do incredible projects, get in on some really wonderful um, visiting writers that we bring in. Mm -hmm. If you're not familiar with the Murphy Foundation, I would 100% go check out their website. You can find it on the Hendrix website, but they also have like their own separate like Hendrix. In, I don't know exactly. I bet if you look up Hendrix Murphy Foundation, you will You'll find, find it. all yeah. <laughs> the information that you need. But that was a big thing that attracted me to Hendrix. Um, the Murphy program was something I was like, I really want to be a part of this. And obviously there's some risk there of like, I didn't know if I was going to get it, but I started working with the people. I accidentally applied my senior year and they were like, girl, you don't even go here yet. And I was like, oh my, oh, I was like, sorry. my goodness, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> but then they knew my name. And so yeah. they were like, yeah, exactly. yeah, this girl wants it. <laughs> yeah, this girl wants it. So just another, and then also, you know, I would recommend if you are studying abroad, use it for an Odyssey credit because why not? Like, yeah, it's like a little bit more work, but well, we won't go fully into Odyssey, but you have to get three. There's six that you could get if you want to graduate with distinction. And those three have to be different. You can't get three artistic creativity or yeah. three, you know, service to the world. You have to get three different ones. And so, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting, you know, a safety, you know, yeah. um, yeah. And then we have another question. Does Hendrix consider weighted GPAs? So, yes. Um, I think that's, a, I think that's a little bit more individualized to your counselor. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically we, you know, we, we'll, we'll know when it's a weighted GPA, but I'm not going to do the math to undo the weight. I'm, I'm going to take it for what it is, but what it does tell me is that you took AP or IB or whatever it is, extra classes to to bolster that GPA, which means that you're doing enough to bolster your education. You're doing a little extra, basically. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it, you know, if it's a four point six, that's what I had when I applied to Hendrix, and I know what that means, <laughs> at least from where I came from. But it's still impressive. It's still good that you put in that extra work. It's still good that you got that those AP credits or those IB credits or whatever extra dual enrollment, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yes. Um, keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, I guess this is a basic answer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also if you are doing APs, I can't speak for IBs or concurrent. I can just speak for APs because that's what I did. Make sure before, because you know, I know AP testing is second semester late into the year, check out Hendrix's requirements for like scores for those things. And also like which classes we accept. Um, Hendrix is, I believe mostly threes and fours for our yeah, exams. Um, but maybe that particular test you're doing is a four. So that might just give you a little bit more study incentive for those things, because it would really stink to put on all your work. And then, you know, you get a three on it, which is still passing, but Hendrix accepts a four. So it just gives you a little bit more study influence, um, yeah. which also, you know, doesn't hurt. No. So yeah, um, this question, I, I think I get what it's saying, but it's are four years guaranteed for dorms. I'm assuming that means like, can you live in a dorm all four years? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Um, we are a four-year residential campus, um, so you do have to live on campus all four years. Um, but I think the standard path is that you will live in a dorm of some kind your first two years, mm -hmm. and then your junior and senior year, you'll live in an apartment, yep. which is what I did and which most people I knew did. Um, but if you want to stay in a dorm the whole time, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome to do that. You absolutely. just can't really get an apartment before your junior year. That, Yeah. First of all, the upper class one will be a little bit bitter about it. True. And second, it'd be very competitive. <laughs> yeah, because we have bid numbers and all of those things. And like, yeah, I'm a sophomore this year. I lived in Galloway last year. Galloway goddess, love Galloway. <laughs> and I live in the Miller Creative Quad this year, which also, you know, Miller Creative Quad is kind of a great step for sophomores. A lot of yeah. sophomores are in there, a lot of juniors. I plan on living in a dorm my first three years just for like, money reasons it's a little bit more inexpensive to live in that's a dorm. another that's so a very good point. yeah there's also no shame if you live in the dorms all four years um no, especially, especially these miller creative quads these dorms yeah. are huge and as you get older <laughs> your bid number you know you have more influence sophomore year is kind of the hardest with bid numbers but junior year you'll be good yeah. um but we don't have to worry about that right now but also just to touch on that being us being a four-year residential campus, just meaning like you have to live on campus all four years. A lot of, especially big state universities, you live on campus freshman year, maybe sophomore year, and then you go live off campus in an apartment. I love that Hendrix is a four-year residential campus because yeah. one, we're, we're small. And so if all the juniors and seniors lived away, they wouldn't be on campus. They wouldn't be hanging out. They wouldn't be studying all around. To me, like that is what makes the culture here so rich is that everybody knows each other. We're all at the same events. There's no like hierarchy of like, oh, the seniors, like I'm too cool to go to this stuff. It really yeah. doesn't exist. No. And because of that, I just think it makes everything so much 
better because you're able to interact with upperclassmen off the bat. Um, and, you know, having, a, I'm a big stand for walkable communities. Me I too. love me too. the fact that just like, I didn't grow up in a neighborhood where like, I could walk across the street and go to my best friend's house. Yeah. I'd have to get in a car and drive like 20 minutes. It is so refreshing and wonderful to be like, you want to study? Okay, I'll be there in two minutes. Yeah. It's just in our campus is from the farthest side of the farthest side is maybe a 10 minute walk. Like with it being said though, for the amount of people on our campus, our campus is large. It could be much smaller, it is, Yeah, but yeah. it is big enough where it doesn't feel like you never feel like closeted and it's very open. It's very naturey. So you never feel like claustrophobic in it, but also, um, it's small enough where you don't have to get in your car and drive to the other side of campus. Parking's wonderful for dorms. You're never having to walk super far, even if your specific lot is like taken. So just some little perks of like small school. Cause again, I didn't think I was going to go to a school that was 2000 people smaller than my high school. Yeah. And so because <laughs> yeah. of that, I was like, Oh, is this going to feel like high school 2.0? Is this going to feel like high school worse? Like, I don't yeah. know what this is going to feel like, but it is so much better. And yeah, the culture of college is just not the same as high school. It doesn't matter if you go to, yeah. I went to a massive set, like 6A, 3000 person school. And it was just high school. Like that was high school to me. This yeah. feels like college. So don't be afraid of that. Yeah, absolutely. I think it creates such a nice community when everybody's on campus. Like when I heard that I had to live here all four years, I was like, Ugh. but I'm so glad that I did. First of all, you don't have to deal with a renter's market, which is terrible. And second, um, you get to know your people really well. You're with your friends all the time. You live with your friends and you have the security of being on campus. Mm. Um, and uh, you can bond over your shared application experiences and what that yeah. was like and how you watch this amazing orange tape <laughs> with a student worker and an admissions counselor who both mm -hmm. love Hendrix and are happy to answer any questions that you have. That's um, true. And note from my producer and you get to dine in a nationally recognized cafeteria every, every single day, day yeah. which is <laughs> truly so good and I have never gotten sick of by the way yeah so just letting y'all know if you want to talk more about like the special event days we have at Hendrix give me a little email or sign up for a virtual chat because I can talk about that for like another full hour <laughs> <laughs> um, oh I got a question what's our favorite meals you go first <laughs> oh gosh you know what? I'm actually going to be so, gonna so be basic. basic. I'm going to be so embarrassing right now. Okay. Every Friday we do the chicken strips and mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah. And it is so good. Those Southern women in there making chicken <laughs> strips do. and mac and cheese. It is delicious. There's some love in there. It really yeah. is. And I love the chocolate chip cookies. I'm, I, oh, so I'll eat other things. I eat the gumbo, I eat the pizza, but that's the best. That's my favorite. Okay. I have a two-parter because we do special events every Wednesday and every Thursday. Every Wednesday we have the warrior wagon, which is like, they bring in a whole different array of food. And it's normally something really special. They did Vietnamese banh mi sandwiches last year that were delicious. And then the mango jerk tacos were so spicy. They were so spicy and I love spice, but they were spicy, but they were really good. <laughs> that was Ty's favorite too. Um, shout out Ty. He's normally sitting right next to me. He's gone right now. He's studying abroad. So there's one. Yeah. <laughs> just shout out to Ty. But, um, and then also if you're a coffee person, <laughs> our producer's laughing in the background. We all miss Ty. If you're a coffee person, I can teach you how to be a little barista with the with the cotton with mm -hmm. the coffee there I get the brown sugar from like the oatmeal station and then I add some honey and then I go we have cold brew now in the calf like what we have protein powder in the mm -hmm. cafeteria what other places have protein powder but um then you like you know you mix in your oat milk that we have you can get bougie <laughs> what other schools have oat? like I was telling my friends about the cafeteria and they're like you have what and I'm like yeah and it's free milk alternatives it's like they're like oh I have to go to the Starbucks on campus or I have to go to the you know caribou coffee on campus no it's free it's included in your meal plan so yeah, yeah. yeah. so there's and we have, another little advertisement we have one more question and I think we're gonna wrap yeah. up but how is the school how is the school sport how, how's the school spirit how spirit, is the school yeah. spirit during <laughs> sports games <laughs> sorry I was yeah I was getting got there. a little tongue twisted um uh, so I think it's really good. I think for a small campus, people really, really get into the games. Mm -hmm. um, I know I, I was friends with um, a bunch of people on the lacrosse teams, and I know that I went absolutely ballistic um, and insane and had to be like restrained. <laughs> but um, I think most people, like a lot of staff and faculty will go to games too. Mm -hmm. So it's a really, it's a big community event. Everything here is like community oriented. Absolutely. So. And especially like a lot of the teams, we have like brother and sister teams where like, 
the women's basketball are associated with the women's volleyball. And so like, they're not required, but they're like highly encouraged to go to all their events that way, like, you know, just builds team morale. It builds like, you know, an experience, a culture of like, we are going to have each other's backs. We're going to support each other. So there's always a lot of people at the games. It's always super fun. And it can just be one of those things with like, you've had a hard day of, you know, doing schoolwork or maybe, you know, work, work or whatever it is, just go hang out at the soccer game or the football game. And our football field is just so iconic to me. It looks like something that'd be like an indie movie. So I love going to those. Those are super fun. And um, also like if you're not into sports, there are so many non-sporty events that we do incredible. Um, And so if you have interest in those, again, reach out. I will talk to you all about those. But I think athletes, non-athletes, everybody goes to those events. So yeah, Yeah. those are incredible. Um, But if you- yeah. yeah, my um, my husband is actually from England, and he's so excited to go to his first American football game at on our campus. Oh, so so um, we'll be there. Soccer, <laughs> yeah, he's used to yeah. soccer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think we're ready to wrap up. This yeah. is so much fun. Thank you guys. This is my first one. So yeah, I had a lot of fun. Well, Rachel, thank you for doing the orange shake with me it was such a great time and thank you guys for joining in tonight it's always a pleasure um make sure to check out our next um our next episode which will be on september no september 27th i believe let me check y'all but we have another orange take coming up for the student athlete experience our producer is checking on it right now but um it'll be september i believe 27th i hope i'm right but um you'll get emails and texts about it yeah, anyways that will communicate you will to you and parents you make your kids watch that one if they're a student athlete yeah parents make your make your kids watch this oh it was the 26th okay yeah so sorry but yes september 26th check in for the orange take which will be the student athlete um it'll be me and a couple of coaches and maybe a couple student athletes talking about that experience so it's going to be really great and as always thank you so much for joining us tonight have a great rest of your evening and we'll see you soon bye thank Thank you you. bye-bye Thank you.